You're listening to Humans in Tech. Our podcast explores today's most transformative technology and the trends of tomorrow, bringing together the brightest minds in and outside of our industry. We unpack what's new in physical access, identity verification, cybersecurity, and IoT ecosystems. We reach beyond the physical world, discuss our digital transformation as a species, and dive into the emerging digital experience. Join us on our journey as we discover just how connected the future will be and how we will fit into that picture. Identive's logical access control technology identifies and verifies users to safely and securely access data. Remote and multi-factor authentication and embedded application solutions protect data on the go, in the office, or at home. Li Dao, VP of Global Marketing at Identiv, will be talking with David Turner today, Director of Standards Development at FIDO Alliance. The FIDO Alliance promotes the development of, use of, and compliance with standards for authentication and device attestation. The world remains addicted to passwords, regardless of the growing consensus to fix the password problem. We need to reduce their use or flat out replace them. I'm excited to have David with us today so he can we can learn more about how FIDO Alliance is changing the net nature of authentication. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's start with the basics. What does FIDO stand for and how is the Alliance working towards fulfilling its mission? Well, FIDO stands for Fast Identity Online and we've been around for about 10 years now. And our goal is uh, to produce um, industry standards and certification programs that reduce the use of uh, independence on passwords so for secure, stronger authentication. So can you tell us about the three sets of specifications published by FIDO uh, for simple, uh, more simple, stronger authentication? Sure. So um, the, uh, the, the initial specs that we produced were called U2F for universal two-factor uh, universal two-factor framework, and the other was the UAF, universal authentication framework. Um, the, the main difference between the two is U2F was specifically targeting uh, two-factor authentication models, and the UAF was targeting the use of biometrics on uh, mobile devices for authentication. Uh, three years or so ago, in collaboration with the W3C, we created FIDO2, which is intended to um, certainly supersede um, uh, the U2F specification, but is now, I would say, uh, mostly replacing UAF as well, but uh, is still, they're still both operational. And, and the goal of FIDO2 is to provide the same kind of simple, strong authentication, but not just in built-in applications, but also in, in uh, browsers. And FIDO2 is currently supported across all major platforms and in all major browsers. I was reading Wired the other day, and for the first time ever, I saw um, an advertorial that talked about FIDO. Um, it was from another company, but which was really interesting to me that that language and um, you know that information about the technology is becoming more mainstream. Yeah, that's um, that's been part of our big push. In addition to producing the the, the specifications themselves, which of course are sort of the starting point. We've also put a lot of energy into certification programs, which makes the uh, the devices that are used in the systems much more, um, um, not just reliable, but uh, increases people's confidence in the security of the model. And we've also done quite a bit of outreach, both with governments uh, as well as in the industry, to help teach them about the importance of first two-factor authentication, but then in particular things like FIDO, which are um, phishing resistant, unlike some of the other alternatives. So we have an active outreach program to uh, highlight the, the active work being done in the organization. We'd love to hear a bit about your own background. And looking at your history, it seems like standardization is definitely the red thread in your career. <laughs> yeah. Um, the short version is I fell into it accidentally. Um, I was working for a much larger company some years ago, and uh, we were involved in the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, and, and I started making comments about our engagement and what I thought we needed to do, and the next thing I knew, I was responsible for doing it. Um, and I discovered I actually had a natural interest in working in standards because it's a great intersection between uh, technology, business, policy, and even um, user experience. 
So in your opinion, why do we need open standards that are more secure than passwords? Well, it doesn't take much to, to see why passwords are a problem when you, you look at the news these days. You hear about all the breaches and hacks. And uh, the reality is that um, uh, the bad guys aren't hacking into most accounts. They're logging in. Uh, it's, it's generally the easiest way to break into an account is just to, re, to, to um, take advantage of stolen passwords and um, being able to, to um, stuff known passwords. And there's a variety of other uh, attack mechanisms out there that are pretty easy to implement when you're only using passwords. Um, the problem is that if everyone implemented their own way of um, adding strength or even replacing passwords, we wouldn't get very far because... Uh, the adoption would be limited because one company would use one mechanism, another would use another mechanism, and we wouldn't get the scale that we really need. By standardizing how we do this, this has enabled Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Visa, MasterCard, um, you know, banks and insurance companies, all to be able to implement the same underlying technology that they know is going to work across all platforms, all browsers. And, and that gives them scale, it gives them more um, uh, assurance that the technology is sound and actually secure because of the support it gets across the industry. So the standardization makes it easier for them to implement and builds a stronger ecosystem. Well, and passwords are a problem too. If most people are, um, you know, if they're logging in instead of hacking in, most people, not, I don't know, but most, but a lot of people use their same password for all their accounts. Yeah, and that's a serious problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that's, that using either the same password in many places or um, using very simple passwords is what is essentially the low-hanging fruit for the hackers. Uh, because if, they, if there's a data breach in one place and they get someone's username and password, they just start using that same username, it's usually an email, and password at all sorts of other sites. And the chances of getting one right are you know, high enough that it's worthwhile. And as far as the easy passwords go, again, they'll take an email that they get and they'll just start beating on sites where there may be money or other interesting things and just start testing all sorts of common passwords. And again, they tend to get very high hit rates because people still use, um, you know, do both of those things. They reuse passwords and they use passwords that really aren't that strong. So do you think our future can actually be passwordless? Do you see that adoption happening and, and any kind of inflection point? We're already headed that way. I mean, it's it's not massive scale yet, but Microsoft uh, with their Windows Hello and such has already moved in that direction and they're actively uh, turning off the use of password in, uh, in many of the systems and even some of the consumer accounts. Uh, Docomo in Japan, a mobile operator, uh, they now have passwordless um, systems in place uh, for their services. So it's it is coming. Um, there are, you know, again, it's one of these things where the infrastructure needs to get built out as well as um, trust in, and user adoption. Uh, it's a slightly new model and it's going to take a little time to help educate users on how to log in uh, in this new way. So when you look at uh, specific industries like finance or government customers, what are the standards that are taking place at FIDO now, um, and how can we support those customers using FIDO? Well, again, the, the benefit of using a standard like FIDO is that, that those agencies um, can get the level of assurance they want. Um, uh, FIDO is, is ranked according to NIST's um, 863-2 um, spec on, on authentication. It's ranked at authentication assurance level 2. Um, which is a very high bar for most applications, uh, which means that if a finance, uh, financial service or government service wants to provide a high level of protection and a secure login experience, uh, FIDO provides that. And the benefit to the relying party that's building it is that they can now get off-the-shelf components to help them build those solutions. Um, there are companies out there like Identiv that provide uh, ways of doing this that uh, make it easier to implement and therefore, again, in, uh, improve adoption and improve security. We talked a little bit about adoption earlier. What are the major barriers to widespread adoption? Well, more people have to start deploying it. Um, uh, it's, it's still slow. Um, and part of that's not anything to do with FIDO itself. 
Uh, unfortunately, there are still a lot of businesses and organizations that don't understand the importance of security. There are far too many sites that don't use any kind of two-factor authentication. While FIDO is, is actually better than, than most other options like SMS one, and one-time passcodes, um, using some kind of two-factor is better than nothing. So a big part of the education and uh, growth of adoption is going to come from um, getting companies just to take that first step into two-factor authentication. Once they've adopted that, then they're in position to start moving more towards um, password-free uh, based solutions. Can you tell us a little bit about how people can get involved in the FIDO Alliance? Well, the FIDO Alliance has a, a number of levels of membership. Um, there's a associate membership, which is for tends to be for those people who are building products and are probably going to go through certificate the certification process. We have sponsor level, uh, which is the level that companies who want to actually get engaged in the development are in, typically interested in. Uh, this will allow them to participate in all of our technical working groups and help write and develop the specifications. And then the top level is our board level membership. And this is targeting companies that actually want to influence the strategic direction of the organization, not just the uh, technical development of the specifications. Many ways to be involved. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and we really appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Eliminate the risk of data breaches, phishing, password theft, and replay attacks with hardened multi-factor authentication cybersecurity. Passwordless logins are simple and secure with Utrust FIDO2 NFC Plus security keys. Insert the device, tap the button, and get secure access. It really is that easy. Learn more at identive.com. Physical security, identity verification, the IoT. The hyperconnectivity of our lives will only grow more pervasive. As technology becomes more automated and experiences more augmented, it's up to us to preserve our humanity and use new tools and trends for good. The only question is, are we up for the challenge?